Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 281. 281. Oh my goodness. Now I am back from Creativation and that's the trade show held here in the United States for all of us very lucky retailers to go and shop shop shop. <laughs> We don't get to bring anything home, but we get to write orders. And I saw so many wonderful manufacturers. Oh my goodness gracious. Now, you're going to be watching this on Saturday, and I will already be in Germany at Creative World, at, at Paper World and Creative World, which is an international show because we do so much business with so many companies that come in from all over the world. And I am hoping to find a little hidden gem over there. I'm hoping to turn a corner in, a, in an aisle and come across a booth that's like, where have you been all my life happiness? So you never know what you're gonna find when you travel internationally with manufacturers and I'm very excited to go. Well, I'm, I'm already there. <laughs> So if you follow us on Facebook, and you don't have to be a member of Facebook to follow us on Facebook at all, you don't have to have a user login or anything like that, then if you go to our Facebook page, you'll be able to go back and watch all, I think there's 21 videos from Creativation, from Tonic Studios and Lawn Fawn and Sizzix and a new company for us called Dusty Attic and a new company called Debbie Moore. I did about 21 short and I do mean short, they're between a minute and three minutes long, right? I actually got my name out in under three minutes. Short videos, just kind of giving you my experience at the show. And then uh, from Creativation, no, Creative World, where I'm at now in Germany, I will be doing the exact same thing. So you'll be able to see what I'm seeing and experience what I'm experiencing and give me your thoughts and opinions and wahoo could choose. I'm excited. Now today, today I have a new collection of Simply Defined for you. It's our next release and there are dies, stamps, and hot foil plates. It's a collection that I did with Mr. SMS in mind. And I think, I hope you, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like it. But I really did think about him when I was designing this because he is just He's, my husband's just an amazing guy, and his dream is to one day live by water. Doesn't matter what kind of water, whether it be a river or an ocean or a lake, he just really wants to end up somewhere by water in a little one-bedroom shack, which is perfectly fine with me. I am that girl. I do not need a lot of things. I am simple and easy and compact and more just means more cleaning. So his idea of a, of a happy retirement is us hopefully finding a place eventually when we're able to retire next to some little body of water. So, um, so that's what this collection is really all about. And I have some technique for you. We're gonna be using product that you may already have in your stash. I think most of you probably do. I've got some new product for you along with my, my Simply Defined release for January. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's almost the end of January. Where did this month already go? Now, I also have winter, winter chicken dinner for all of you. <laughs> and at the show, oh my gosh, at the show, people were walking up to me. You're a winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Doing the chicken, winter, winter chicken dinner dance. You're, hey, or they were like, hey, you're the winner, winter chicken dinner lady. Okay, I've been called so much worse. <laughs> If I'm the winner, winner, chicken dinner lady, I'm good with that. <laughs> and I did my speaking engagement. And if you're an independent mom and pop shop who just happened to be in that room when I did it, and you came up to me and thanked me, no thanks needed. We are in this together. All of us independents are in this together. And if, 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 if my voice in telling them the way it really is. <laughs> it was so funny. I'm on the panel and we're raised up on a platform and there's like seven of us and you've got a CEO here and another CEO there and a, a, a CEO here. But the way it happened, I sat in between the CEO of AC Moore, big mass market you know, company, AC Moore, 
and I sat in between so Anthony from AC Moore and Jennifer who is the vice president of strategic analysis or strategic analytics Michaels so here's AC Moore here's Michaels and here's me in the middle of them oh my <laughs> But um, I guess I said I said a few things because I just talk. It just whatever comes out comes out. But uh, there were a few laughs in the audience. I think I probably I guess I called Michaels out on their forty percent off coupon and told you retailers don't worry about that forty percent off coupon. You just let them buy with their forty percent off coupon anyway. Hopefully there's a chance for this. It was recorded for it to be on the AFCI web page so that those of you who were unable to attend the event or unable to attend Creativation can go back and watch because it really was interesting having so many different types of businesses in our industry from manufacturers to mass retailers. There was an influencer up there. There was me, a small independent mom and pop shop, keeping it, keeping it real. And apparently I didn't hide anything on my face. So when when I was agreeing with the panel, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I was nodding, mm -hmm, yep, yep, yep. And when I didn't agree with him, I guess I did like, what? You know, I'm like, no. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> anyway, thank you for all your support for all of you who said, you just go there and do it. I appreciate it. I went, I did, I'm done. Now, I have winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about, and that was from the last YouTube, 280, and that was part of the Northwoods exclusive stamps. Aren't they beautiful? Beautiful. And the Tombow markers, five markers. I colored the whole stamp with five markers, really. Watch YouTube number 280. It will, you'll go honestly so our winner winner chicken dinner from those from that youtube i have two of them i have linda adi linda adi hello linda adi you adu when became a winner winner chicken dinner linda adi adu is a <laughs> i do think you are a winner winner chicken dinner is that you congratulations you're a winner chicken dinner you're a winner Chicken dinner, wahoo, kachu for you, but you're not alone. Nope, nope, nope. I've got somebody else to go with you. Northwoods, you're going to be getting those Northwood and uh, Northwoods exclusive stamp and some ultra fine crystal glitter, wahoo, kachu. Danielle, Danielle Brown. Hello, Danielle Brown. Let's see if I if it helps with Zoom. Hello, Danielle. You too are a winner chicken dinner you're a winner chicken dinner wahoo cut you for you now how does danielle and linda how do you claim your prize so easy go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com look for the link that says winner winner chicken dinner while you're there you could be looking for the little f that says facebook so you can follow all of my facebook uh videos from Creativation and creative world when I, well, I'm there now. When you're watching this, I'm already there. But go and look for winner, winner, chicken dinner. Follow the directions. Claim your prize. We will confirm that you are indeed our prize winner and get your prizes out to you just as quickly as possible. I hope that you both enjoy your lovely gifts and much love for posting your comments. Yay, you just never know when it's going to be your turn when our random software is going to pick your name. And, well, for Linda and Danielle, well, it's time. <laughs> Okay, now I have got stamps, I've got dies, I've got hot foil plates. I'm really going to be focusing on the dies today. I've got a technique that you may have seen before, you may not, it might be a good reminder. And I think because this collection was really focused on Michael, my husband, Mr. SMS, that I wanted to, the, the stamps that I did, the sentiments that I did, really do kind of reflect what we've been going through the past year three years <laughs> really it's been three years since my dad passed away and then my mom got cancer and then and then um and then my mom passed away no then our house burned down then my mom passed away it was just there was just so much going on and i really wanted to um I really wanted to, to say things to him because there have been moments that have not been easy where we have looked at each other like, you, 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 we've been married for almost 24 years. I've known him since I was 13 years old. 
And, and while we love each other, it is stressful sometimes to go through these things. You're going through them together, but sometimes you forget that you're going through these things together because you know you don't mean to get mad or to get angry or to, to start a fight, but you also know that the person that you're giving the most grief to is probably the safest person in your life who's going to love you no matter what. And so when you vent, unfortunately, sometimes I vented on Michael and he would, I, I vented on Michael and, and, and I probably will do it again and he'll do it to me, but, but we're, that's what a good marriage is. That's what a good partnership is, is that you recognize it for what it is and then you let it go and you go on. So I'm going to read you the stamp sentiments to begin with, even though I'm probably not going to be using them because they really do reflect different places in our life over the last three years that have um, impacted me or him or the both of us. And so I'm just going to read them to you and then I'm going to start the, the, the class and we'll get playing and we'll be embossing and we'll be die cutting. And I've got some fabulous paper packs from Die Cuts with a View. So anyway, okay, so the stamps, they come like this. They're $9.99, lots of sentiments different fonts, uh, whole range, but the, the sentiment themes are kind of built around each other. So the first one says, no beauty shines brighter than that of a good heart. And I do believe, I, I know for a fact that Michael has the best heart because he lets me be me. And that's what my mom kept telling him before she passed away as in the last, the last day or two, she just kept saying, Mr. Michael, I love you so much because you let Stacy be Stacy. So no, no beauty shines brighter than that of a good heart. And Michael has a good heart. And this one is so true. Someday you'll look back and know exactly why it had to happen. And I'm hoping that in my life, I'm able to look back at all of these things that have happened in the past three years and know why they had to happen. I don't understand yet. And I don't know that I'll ever fully understand or that God will ever show me exactly why, but there must be a reason and I'm supposed to learn from it. So someday you will look back and know exactly why it had to happen. We don't usually know why it had to happen when it happens. So uh, happiness is the place between too little and too much. And I think that's what Michael and I are trying to find right now. Happiness between too little and too much. We, we need to find a home <laughs> that, that is going to work. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be small. It just has to be where we find our happiness. So this one is more about me to Michael than Michael to me. <laughs> He's probably going to want to stamp this on my forehead. One way to get the last word is to apologize. I love that one. One way to get the last word is to apologize. And isn't that the truth? Because gosh, when you say you're sorry, you just own it and you apologize, it, it, it just, it, it can solve so many things. Sometimes you just have to say you're sorry and apologize. And, um, and so anyway, again, more for me to Michael than Michael to me. <laughs> happiness often, uh, happiness often sneaks in a door you did not think that was open. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we find a, a new door haha, <laughs> and inside is a whole bunch of happiness. Uh, God has a purpose for your pain, a reason for your struggle, and a reward for your faithfulness. Don't give up. That's for the two of us and my boys and everybody <laughs> who, who is in a situation where you just, you're not sure you can see your way out. You'll see it. You will just takes a little more time than maybe you thought. All right. Uh, better days ahead. <laughs> I like this stamp. Better days ahead. Uh, don't wait. The time will never be just right. And actually, I think that one's more for Michael than it is for me because I'm more of the risk taker between us and Michael's more of the conservative. So I think for me to him, don't wait. The time will never be just right. We just have to try and just do it. And then I have, I never met a strong person with an easy past. And I believe that to be true. 
So, and I also have love you. So sentiments, I just wanted to read them to you because they, they really do mean something to me. I just don't do sentiments for the sake of doing them. I have to feel them and I have to feel the collection when I'm designing. So I am going to tilt on down. We're gonna get started for today. I hope you like what I have for you and I hope you visit us on Facebook and follow me along Creativation and now Creative World. Lots to see and lots to do. So down we go and let's get started. All right, bye everybody. Oh, I probably should have one of those cards there. Down we go. And then let's zoom on in. Zoom. <laughs> ah, my little crooked. Still a little crooked. Mm. Oh, I'm getting worse. I'm not getting better. I'm going in the wrong direction, Stacy. Am I better yet? Oh, wait. And there's an ant on my camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna just go. Let's see if I tilt it back just a little bit and take it down just a little bit more. Yeah, very high tech here. I know. Oh, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right. So downstairs, I don't think they're doing this one. But this is one of the dies. I think we are still deciding because I'm taping this early. So we're still deciding what the make and take should be. This is one of my sets. Here's another one of my sets. So these are the downstairs make and takes that we're figuring out because I'm taping this early because I have to leave for Germany tomorrow morning. They are definitely more uh, soothing and serene. I think they're probably a little, well, I don't want to say they're more masculine. I guess it's going to depend upon how you, how you cut them and what papers you use, but they do, they do lend absolutely to a more masculine release without any question. And they absolutely are all about Michael and finding a home eventually when we retire. Now, what am I going to start with? I think I'm going to start with one of the dies that you haven't seen yet. And the collection is called Water's Edge. And this is one of the dies. And it is a, a drop of water. And then you know how it ripples out. When you see it ripple out, that's what this die is all about. Because anytime you drop water into water, those ripples just go. And you never know how far those ripples are gonna go or who they're going to touch or affect. And I think that says a lot about us because we are we are a, a, a drop of water in somebody's life and we ripple out in their life and how we affect them can have a dramatic impact on them. So I wanted to do something that kind of represented Michael and I and our drop of water and we're waiting to see. <laughs> we're waiting to see how the ripple effect goes. Now, the first die is a decor die, which means that there is no cutting edge all the way around. This is going to cut into paper and then you would use the flat edge to cut out of paper. So this is going to cut in and this will then, when you pair them together, will cut the whole design out. Let me show you. I'm gonna bring over my, so I told you I had a couple, a couple stacks from Die Cuts with a View that I really, really liked. There's three of them. There's the neutrals, there's the cool neutrals, and then there's the burlap stack. So I'm gonna be using these three today because they really, the colors are beautiful. I don't have colors like this in my collections at all. I, I just, they lended so well to this collection that I couldn't help but want them. And the lovely thing between the neutrals and the cool neutrals is that you do not duplicate your colors. They're six by six in size. They're easy to use. I just found them very convenient. And the burlap, I wanted this burlap because, well, the cards we did all had a burlap background to them. They all had a burlap mat to them. And I love the texture of it. I love how it it adds a little something. It's not just paper and it's they're not expensive. So I'm going to be playing with these today. So I think I'm going to get into 
I think I'm going to get into this one. Let's see if I've got the color I want in here. Oh, yeah, here we go. I'm just going to use, I think, do I want that one or do I want the gray? Oh, I don't know. I think I'm going to cut my die kind of out of this. It's not black, it's not brown. I'm not exactly sure what color you would call it. Oh, I like that one too. So you can see that the colors are not the same per pack. Maybe I like this one better. Hmm. I don't know, what do you like better? No, I think I'm gonna stick with my original. Or was that, no, that's not my original. Well, I'm gonna go with this one. And I'm gonna die cut this out. So I'm gonna bring my Big Shot machine right on over. Ta-da! Oh, looky, I found a little star. Oh, look at how cute. <laughs> hmm. All right, so I'm going to bring my Big Shop machine on over. Now, my dice will go through your Big Shop machine. It will go through a Cuddle Bug machine. It will go through a Spellbinders machine, whether it be a Grand Caliber or a Platinum machine. Anything that will take what's called wafer dies, and they're called wafer dies because they're wafer thin. Now, this is a very detailed die. Do you see all those swirls and all those cuts? Definitely a detailed die without question. It is going to take a precision base plate with a Big Shot machine. You can use your precision base plate in a Spellbinders Platinum machine, but what this does is this tool right here allows you to take very intricate dies and cut them to where all the little bits and pieces fall right out as opposed to getting frustrated with it. Now, I'm gonna keep my multi-purpose platform from Sizzix completely closed. Doesn't matter if you have the large one or the small one, you're gonna keep it completely closed because I'm doing a wafer style die. Then I'm going to take my precision base plate. Again, it does not matter if you have, this is version three. So if you have the first version, which kind of had a, um, I don't know, like a bronzy top to it, that's gonna work just fine. If you have the second version, oh, you can see me, hello. <laughs> If you have the second version, which has kind of a matte black on top of it, that's going to work just fine. Or if you have the third version, which is the chrome, which is beautiful, this is also going to work just fine. Why do they have three versions? Well, they finally got to the chrome where the die does not leave any, any lines. It doesn't um, indent or bite into. If yours is working just fine, your precision base plate, there is no reason to have this. Keep the one you've got until it's not working. Now, the biggest thing about a precision base plate is that you cannot use it with the directions facing you. No, it has to be with the metal facing you. In addition, you do not put a clear plate down on your multi-purpose platform. This takes the place of your bottom clear plate. I'm gonna put my precision platform down. I'm gonna take my paper which is perfect six by six, so it's gonna cut just lovely. I really do, I, I love the paper. I'm, I'm really, really happy with the paper. Um, I'm gonna turn, so this die has a slight curvature on the top, and that's how I'm gonna feed it in. If I were to feed it this way, where this line goes straight into that roller, it would go ka-thump. Let's see if we can make it ka-thump. I'll try and make it ka-thump. Can't guarantee that it will, but I'll try. So I've got a cut plate, or a do not cut plate on top. And I'm gonna send it on through, and we're gonna see if we can make it thump. Oh, not so bad. No thump. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I spoke too soon. The reason it made that big noise is because you're taking a straight edge die and putting it parallel to the roller that's in the machine. And it's going, uh, thump. It doesn't hurt the die and it doesn't hurt the machine. It just makes a noise that maybe you're not the most happy with. Now, if you want to avoid that, you just put the die on a slight angle. This die happens to have a curved top, so we should be okay. But if you put it on a slight angle, it's going to take the die and feed it in a little differently. So it's not hitting that, that parallel piece of the die all at the same time, that straight edge. So I did a 180 degree rotate and I'm gonna send this back just because I wanna be uh, absolutely sure 
that I get it cut through. There we go. No kathump. All right. Now I'm turning it over to see, can I see if it cut all the way? I'm gonna move this out of my way. And then I'm gonna pull all my negative pieces out. And again, it's an intricate die. So you really want that precision base plate. Remember how I said it wasn't gonna cut all the way out of my paper and it didn't. Gosh, you could use this. You could use this for something totally different. That's a pretty cool piece. Use that for something totally different. But what I have is here. And again, it looks like my water droplets. But what if you wanna get this whole piece out? Well, it's up to you. You can either trim it out with your trimmer or we do have the die that's going to let you cut it all the way out. This is not a precision die. This is an open frame die and it's pretty self-explanatory because you can put your hand right through it. it. It does not have all the metal through the center. So this you cannot use a precision base plate with. What will happen is if you're using your precision base plate with an open frame die is it will want to warp it. So I'm going to bring over another clear plate because now I need it. I'm going to put my die down. In fact, maybe I give a little trim just to make it easier. And absolutely, if you don't want to run it through again, you can take it with your trimmer and trim it out. But we had the room, so we gave you the die. Line it up. Slight angle so that this corner is going to hit that roller before this corner does. Can you see this corner is higher to the roller? Put my plate on and send it on through. And because it's an open frame die, it really is only going to take one roll. Easy peasy mac and cheesy. And we're good to go. Then I could go in. Let's try this one. Because these are all cool and neutral kind of colors, they just work perfectly with the collection. I could go back in, cut another piece, kind of have it askew, send it through. It just needs one roll, easy peasy mac and cheesy. No big thump. So you can use that die just to make rectangles if you wanted. And now you get a better feel for what the die is. Right? a better feel for what the die is. Do I have one over here? Oh, I've got one here too. Oh, don't fall. There we go. This one we did out of shimmer paper. But just to give you a better feel for what that die looks like. So, but what am I gonna do with it? I'm gonna work with this part first. I'm gonna play with this part. And this is where we're gonna get a little bit more, hmm, I don't wanna say complicated, just a little bit more maybe advanced. A little teeny itty bitty bit, okay? So I'm gonna be playing with Stacy tape. And this is my self-adhesive, double-sided, 
sticky tape. It's simply defined, is what the brand is, simply defined double-sided tape. This happens to be a six inch roll. We sell it everything from a uh, eighth of an inch all the way up to six inches. I'm looking for my smaller roll and don't see it, but I know it's here. So we sell everything from about an eighth of an inch all the way up to six inches. And again, it's a double-sided tape. It will tear or rip so you don't have to use it with scissors. What would be comparable to this tape? Well, if you already have Scorpal or Sukwang tape, you're going to be just fine because this tape is longer and a little bit stronger uh, than that tape. I'm gonna be using heat on this tape, so I don't know who else's tape is heat resistant. I am positive that Scorpal is because that's what we used to use before. So that I'm very, very confident in. Now I'm gonna take my tape and if you don't have a roll this big, let's say you only have a roll that's two inches, that's fine. Just lay your tape in, in stripes until you get to the width that you need. Not a problem. I'm gonna take my tape and I'm gonna rip me off a piece. And I'm gonna put it down on some white paper. Okay, that works for me. Now, I wanna remove the sticky on the sides. This is sticky right now. So I need to do something with that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it right off. And be done with it. I'm not gonna save it because the sticky is exposed. You gotta do something with it right away. Okay, so this is what I've got. Piece of paper right on, piece of Stacy tape right on some white paper. Perfect, or should I do it this way? Hmm, that works good too. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is expose the sticky. I'm gonna hold on to this liner. I'm gonna hold on to this liner because I'm going to need it to push my die into my sticky as well as pushing some of my embossing powder. I'm gonna take my die cut that I've just done and I'm gonna lay it straight down, straight down on my sticky. Now, does it matter if it's 100% straight? No, because I'm probably going to die cut it again or cut it out with my scissors. I'm gonna take the liner that I just pulled off and I wanna put it right on top of that and press down. The liner is the one thing that doesn't stick to the sticky. I wanna make sure that I have good all over pressure and just press it in place. All I'm trying to do is tape down that die cut onto my sticky because there's still sticky to be seen. See, see, see. Now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take my Earth and Sky embossing kit from Stampendous. This is exclusive to Scrapbooking Made Simple. The only place you're gonna find it is Scrapbooking Made Simple and they are back in stock. I'm gonna take my Earth and Sky embossing kit and Stampendous has put together a beautiful collection of different colored embossing powders and two fragments. So they're kind of like mica flakes that will heat emboss into these embossing powders. I'm going to use that and I'm going to start with this chunky white embossing powder. You know how I always talk about detailed embossing powder? This is 100% this is the opposite direction. This is super duper chunky. It is not a fine powder. It just, I don't know if I can get it to zoom in. It is not a fine powder. It's like, it, 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 it actually has texture to it. It's, it's thick and um, and I'm going to put it right down on some of my just a little bit I think I'm just going to use a little bit of this so inside the inside the cute little uh, package of the earth and sky they give you two little straws with little spoons so I'm going to take my little spoon and I'm just going to put a little bit of this around right onto my sticky no Versamark. I'm using embossing powder, but no Versamark. 
Now, the key thing about this is, if you can see, I don't know if I can get it close enough, there's white little pieces on my die cut. I want to make sure that those little white pieces are not anywhere on my die cut. So I'm going to kind of tap those little pieces into the sticky so they stay in place and I'm going to move them off my die cut because when I heat this, I don't want them to melt onto my die. A few of them here and there, not a problem. I just don't want them everywhere. So now I'm going to take my little liner again and I'm going to give a good push down because I want those pieces to be smushed right into my to my sticky so they stay where they're supposed to stay. And anywhere I see one on my on my die, I'm just going to take it right off. Okay. So I've got the white there and I used very little. You'll be able to see it once I heat. Then I think I'm going to take some of my blue. And I'm going to drizzle I think I'm going to drizzle some of my blue all over, all over. I'm not going to cover in the whole thing. And I started with my chunkiest embossing powder first because as I get thinner with my embossing powder, where the chunky is, the thinner will fill in the gaps. And again, I don't want it on my, on my die cut. So I can either use an inexpensive makeup brush to kind of move it all over and get it off and kind of set it in. So right now, it kind of just looks like a little bit of a mess. There's still open space, so that means I need to add more. And this time, I think I'm going to add, I think I'm going to add, well, maybe I'll try a little bit of both. So this is kind of a vintage greeny type of embossing powder, kind of a vertigree. And I'm just going to throw it on top of that blue and fill in some more of the white spaces. So I'm creating my own background using embossing powder instead of using ink. I'm creating a background for my dye. Okay. So that's where we're at. And again, I'm just going to take my finger and kind of just rub it here, rub it there, get it off my any place that there's still some sticky kind of move it over. If you'd rather just use it with a makeup brush, you absolutely can. And wherever there's sticky left, I'm hoping that this will adhere to it. Okay. Now maybe I maybe I throw just a little bit of the dark green just to see what happens. I have no idea what's going to happen. We won't know until we heat. So you use very, very, very little of your embossing powder. Press it into place. And now this is when the magic happens. For those of you who have never seen embossing powder before, this is where we take a heat tool. It is not a hair dryer. A hair dryer will not work. This is the heated tool by Ranger and it is very hot. However, the, the heat is very focused as well and it will allow you to get close enough to your project without burning it. Cylinder heat tools tend to, they go really fast. You'll be able to change the color super fast. You'll be able to melt this powder because that's what I've been using as a powder. You'll be able to melt this powder into a solid super fast with a cylinder, but you're also going to run the chance of burning it. So what do I mean by heating a powder into a solid? 
you're going to watch. It's going to take a little bit longer because instead of using an embossing medium like a Versamark, I'm using my tape. I did not use any Versamark at all. So I was able to actually glue down the die on top of the tape, adhere it to the tape first, and then go and add my embossing powder. So I haven't used any glue at all. All I'm using is powder. Now, if you are working with kids or you are working with seniors or people who are not crafty, this is an awesome, an awesome way for them to play because it's only tape and only powder. And then if you're comfortable, you don't want the kids working with this, but if you're comfortable having them just put down the embossing powder on some tape with no glue, then you do the heat set for them and have them watch because their eyes will mesmerize. It will, they'll grow big and they get so very excited. So there is a heat tool that I am going to be trying out from WOW. It's a new heat tool. It's a cylinder and it has a high and a low. I want to play with it before I bring it in. So I'm going to see it in Germany and we'll see what happens. Now I'm going to stay in one place. I'm not doing this as a lot of people do. And the reason I'm not doing that is because this needs to focus its heat. I need to get that heat hot enough to turn my powder into a solid. And if I do this, I'm adding heat and then I'm taking it away and it's instantly cooling. And then I'm adding heat and then I'm taking it away. You, it's natural, you just kind of want to do this, but I want you to hold in one place because this is the Ranger heated tool and it is not going to burn. See how, can you see how close I'm getting? I mean, I'm right on it. And that's going to take that powder and it's going to melt it into a solid. And as it melts it, then I can start moving my, moving my, my heat tool. Then I can start moving my heat tool. So I want to do part of this and then leave part of it so I can show those who have never seen embossing before what it looks like. So it is kind of like watching me dry paint. I'm sorry, but I didn't want to have it necessarily pre-done for you. I need those who are new to this to see what happens. Okay, here's a good, I think this is a good space to stop. All right. So, can you see the gloss here? Can you see how shiny that is? compared to how dull that is down here. As I'm heating it, it's melting into a solid. It's now like a plastic, but there are some places that I did not get and you don't see it when I tilt it back and forth. You don't see the shiny. That means it didn't get hot enough there and I need to go back and finish heating but you can see the difference between the powder down here, which is still very dull compared to the vibrant up top, which is just beautiful. So let's go back. I'm gonna keep it in one place and I'm gonna to continue to heat. And that chunky white that I put down originally, that, because those granules are so big, they're going to spread a little bit more when I heat them. The thicker your embossing powder, the more chunky those little grains are in that bottle, the more it's going to spread. And there's a purpose for chunky embossing powder. Something like this is awesome with chunky embossing powder. Now, as my, as my embossing powder is turning, uh, you see me moving my, moving my heat it tool. So as I see it melting, I'm moving my heated tool. Now, Stacy, why didn't you just put the embossing powder down first, do all your embossing, and then put your die cut on top of it? Well, you can, absolutely. Sometimes your die won't lie as flatly as you might like it. And this is just an easier way to tape, uh, to glue down or to use my tape to put down an intricate die so that you're not trying to glue it down. It just lays right down on the tape and you're good to go. 
Okay, let's see. Now you see my tape is not melting, it's not bubbling, it's not fuming. My tape is heat resistant and it is made to emboss on it. Let's see how I did. Oh, well, this one. Okay, so can you see? Now you see that gloss everywhere except for there. Can you see how it's not glossy there at all? So that means I didn't add enough heat. And I need to go back. And can you see I'm holding it without burning my fingers? I don't know that you'd be able to do that with a cylinder. Not only that, with a cylinder, this would go, psh, you, this would be blowing left and right and everywhere. With my little heated tool, I'm able to control the heat. It doesn't burn my fingers. It doesn't burn my paper. So can you burn embossing powder? Yes, absolutely you can. It will burn. It's much harder to burn embossing powder with a heated tool. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. If I say so myself. Okay. So now you've got this, what feels like, see it's already dry, what feels like um, the texture of it is, is, um, it, 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 it is definitely raised and it's got that high gloss that you can't get with an ink and it feels like the 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 die cut and the embossing are are one in the same it all just feels like it was meant to be married together and it's it's a different it's a different view it's a different finish than what you would get with a typical ink so let's trim this out just a little bit. I could absolutely use my die to get it out. I want to get rid of some of this extra Stacy tape that I'm not going to need. Now, if I wanted to leave it like this, I still have a little bit of sticky all the way around. And that's where you can come in and throw just a little bit of transparent glitter down. My new bottles for my glitter are on the way. If you ordered glitter and you got the Uber Special, congratulations. Because <laughs> the new right size bottles are, are being done now. But I could just take a little bit of my super more than micro fine glitter and anywhere where there's still just a little bit of sticky I could just put this down and kind of move it with my finger and anything that is still sticky the glitter is going to hold to and because it's so fine because it's so fine it's not going to detract from it's just going to add a little bit of sparkle just where there might be a little extra sticky and on this one, you don't even see it because there's hardly any extra sticky. But how pretty is that? And again, it's got that that epoxied feel. I guess that's what it, it's like. It's like an epoxied, amazing feeling that you it's not flat. It's got dimension and it's got depth because as you've added the the embossing powder it's a little heavier in one spot a little lighter in another you've blended some of the colors together and it just gives you something that you can't always get with an ink and lots of us have lots of embossing powder did you know that you can use it with my double-sided tape because if you didn't now you do you don't have to whip out the versamark you don't have to use it with just a stamp I used it with my die and I think it looks pretty I think it looks pretty darn good and then put the sentiment on it um, whichever one made your heart happy the the happiness often sneaks in a door you did not uh, you did not think was open or someday you'll know exactly why it's kind of a serene look but we're gonna move on. So I'm gonna put this one off to the side 
and I'm going to bring out my little boat. Here's my little boat die. And you get a big boat and a little boat. And this time, I'm going to take the two dies. So I've got a decor die for the boat. So a decor die. And well, actually this one cuts all the way out. So there is a there is a a cut edge all the way around. So this will cut all the way out, but I added a frame to it so that you could then have a shadow to it as well. So let's cut these out. And what colors do I want? Oh, I don't know. Color makes my heart happy. Oh, I like that color. Oh, I like that color too. Hmm. Okay, let's go with this one. And for the top of it, I think I'm going to go with this one. So for my shadow, I'm going to go my tealy color. And for my actual boat, I'm going to go a kind of a gray color. And let's go ahead and bring over my Big Shot machine. And I'm going to start with my my shadow because that's the one I need actually first. And remember, it is a wafer die. It's an open frame die. It's not intricate at all. I'm just going to run it on through. It's going to cut beautifully. One run and I'm done. Get my paper in there straight. Okay, so one run and I'm done. Ta-da! Now let's cut my, my boat die. This time, this is a little more intricate and I am going to need my precision base plate. So I'm gonna send my multi-purpose platform on through. I'm gonna grab my precision base plate, put it with the directions side down. I'm gonna grab my paper. I'm gonna put it with my die face down. I'm going to grab a do not cut plate, put it on top, and I'm going to send it on through. Oh, I have a feeling that that's going to be sticky. Yes. Oh, I don't want that. So there's a little dab of glue from the packaging that I want to make sure is gone. I do not want it to stick to my top plate because then I won't be able to rotate it. So let's see if that's enough to make it gone. Oh, and there's one there too. Little glue dot. Let's see if I can get those off. All right, let's see what happens. Let's send it on through. Worst case scenario, I do a full 180 degree rotation. So one. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees because then it's going to hit that roller in a new and unique way. I'm going to send it on back. Center my paper. Go, go, go. And let's see if it cut. So I can turn it around and I can see that it's cut through. So let's pop it on out. Oh, yeah. It cut. There's my water. Let's get my. die out. It is a very fine die of a beautiful little sailboat. And what's left in here? That's it. Okay, that's all I needed from it. Perfect. Oh, where did my water just go? Did I just scrape my water right off of me? Stacy Park. Holy smokes, artichokes. I sure did. All right, water one more time. 
you probably saw me do that and said, wait, but it was too late. I had already decided to try and clean up my mess. See what happens when I'm thinking about Mr. SMS and his poor floor, which is a mess. Trust me. All right, I'm just going to cut the water, send it on through. Roll, roll, roll. I'm going to just do a quick 180 degree flip and bring it on back, back, back. That way the rollers hit that paper and that die in a new and unique way. And remind me not to throw my water away this time. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Okay, there's my water. Put them to the side so I don't accidentally do it again. And everything pretty much falls right out of my die. Okay, so this is the piece that I want to start with first, is the shadow. And you'll see that um, the boat fits right on the shadow, as does the water. So when you put the two together, you get a beautiful looking finished piece. So I'm going to take the, the actual decor dies, the, the, the ones that are the detail die, and I'm going to work with those in just a minute. I'm going to grab over my white paper. I'm going to grab some Stacy tape. I'm going to tear it. You don't have to cut it. And I'm going to put it down. Boy, I came really close, didn't I? Look at how close I got. Wow. That is from tearing Stacy tape for years now. I think it was the very first thing I ever manufactured. I think it was. All right. So I'm at the same place I was when I was doing my, my water, my droplet of water in the ocean. So I'm going to take and open it up. Expose my sticky, put my boat right down on it. Now you noticed I haven't put my boat together with the top piece yet. Put my boat right down on it. Take my liner, give a good push. And now, now I can actually almost paint with my embossing powders. I can choose which embossing powders I want to go where. This is the Shabby Chic Blue and it's got a little bit of glitter in it. I think I'm going to start with, I'll start with a little bit of my, of my chunky white and throw some of that down. And I can almost decide exactly what colors I want and where I want those colors. I might just take a little bit more and just kind of drizzle it on down. And then take my liner and kind of press it into place just so it stays. And then maybe I take a little bit of my, my shabby blue so it's got a little blue and a little bit of white and just a little bit of glitter. It's chunkier than a typical embossing powder. It's very much like the white that I just used. I'm gonna throw a little bit of this down. So I'm going from the heaviest embossing powder first, and I'm gonna finish with the, in the heaviest meaning the chunkiest. How thick are those grains? How big are those grains? The bigger they are, then you wanna put those down first because the finer the grains will come in and fill in all the extra space. Just take it and walk it down just a little bit so it kind of blends down. Okay, and I'm going to take my paper and kind of push it down into place. And then maybe I'll take my sky blue and kind of drizzle that all over. And wherever there's available sticky still, this is going to hold to. So if I were to put down the, the, the thin 
embossing powder, the very fine embossing powder first, it would fill up all the spaces, not leaving me any room to put down some of that chunky stuff. So I've got some of this and I'm gonna take this on down and on down. And I'm just kinda going all over the place. And then what if we took some of the regular blue and threw that in there. Maybe started that just. Put that somewhere over and I'm just dripping in no rhyme, no reason, just kind of blending my colors kind of down. So I started with my white and my lighter colors and then bringing it a little bit darker. And then what if I finished with my green? And put some green around. Okay. And then I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to kind of just kind of move them all into each other. Just kind of move them all into each other. You're not necessarily burnishing it like hard. You're just trying to move that embossing powder so that it fills up any space that is still sticky. I think I'm going to take a little bit of this light green and move this into put a little bit of that light green right into with some of my dark green. So I'm almost painting with it because I'm deciding where I want my colors to go. And you can see that there's no rhyme and reason. I'm not being delicate with it. And then I can take and kind of brush off my my dye. And that's what I've got, what kind of looks like a hot mess. Let's see what it looks like when I heat. So I'm going to start up at the top. And I'm going to, as I see it turn, and it's going to take a little bit longer. Know this, remember, you're going to stay there until you see that powder turn. Until it goes from a, uh, a powder to a solid. And you can see how close I'm getting. I'm right up on top of it. And it's not scorching and it's not burning. If you are comfortable with your cylinder tool, you go right ahead. If you've been embossing for years and years and you have got your cylinder tool down pat, no problem, easy peasy, you know not to scorch or burn, you do your cylinder tool. But if you are new to embossing, you may want to just try the heated tool. It will take you longer. I'm not going to lie about that. It absolutely will take you longer. But at least it's fell safe. You're not going to have to re die cut or restart all over again because you accidentally burned your paper or your embossing powder. So as it's turning and I'm moving it down, just making sure that I'm all it's all turned. And the beautiful thing is because it has that finish to it, because it has that finish to it, I will be able to see where the gloss is and where the gloss isn't. And where the gloss isn't, it's clear where I've embossed and where I haven't. It's, it's very evident where the embossing has turned and where the embossing hasn't because that gloss is right there for you to see. And I'm painting with my embossing powder. No Versamark, no medium to make that powder stick, just some double stick Stacy tape, simply defined tape. And again, I'm very, very comfortable in telling you that Suk Wing tape is going to work fine because I, I know that my tape is, is a little bit stronger, a little bit longer than Suk Wing tape, which would also be known as score tape. I can't be sure about anybody else's double-sided tape because I haven't worked with it. So I don't know if you use it 
if it will burn or if the tape will bubble. Um, I don't know that it's heat resistant. And I don't know to what degree it's heat resistant. So now it's turning. Move it over here. And it's turning. I can still see it's not turned right there, so I'm going to hold my tool. I can still see, I can see that it's not turned there. Anywhere where I'm not getting that beautiful glossy finish, I'm just moving my heat tool back over it to make sure that I see everything I want. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, so that's where we're at. Now I can take and put on my final, let's use a little bit of stay put. <gasps> oh, my stay put was open. Holy smokes, artichokes. All right, well then. I've got plenty of glue on that now. Let's see what I can do. All right, because this is now a, a, a plastic, it'll wipe right off. Whoop, like it never happened. Ho, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use one more wet wipe. Oh, I can't believe that that happened. Ho, oh, okay. Because this is a plastic, it melted into a plastic, that stay put wiped right off. And now, let's get some of it off of my die. And I've got plenty now to put on the back. <laughs> no problem there. I cannot even believe that that just happened. And I'm gonna line it up. Let me get my fingers not so gluey. Looky, I made a mess. Ah. Gosh, and I wasted it. I hate wasting product. I know I have more of it. It's mine. I get that, but still makes my heart a little sad. Let's put the lid back on, shall we? Tightly. <laughs> okay. So again, you know, these aren't edited. Otherwise that would have been cut right out, but we're just going to continue on. Happy accident. Down you go. All right, so there's part of it. And let's just take some tape and put it, or some stay put and daub it right on the back since I've got it there. Kind of nice working with embossing powder because it wiped right off because it's a plastic. Okay, straighten it out a little bit. Nope, I don't have enough on the back. Oh, straighten, straighten. Jeepers. There, ta-da, <laughs> good enough. Okay, so here we are. Now we can take the frame that goes with it. If you don't want a fussy cut, you just wanna roll it through your Big Shot machine. You can take the frame that goes with it. It is an open frame die, so no precision base plate needed. I better put the lids on. 
Oh, can you even believe that happened? Has that ever happened to you where your glue was partially open and it just went blop? I don't know that I've ever done a YouTube where the glue was partially open and it just went blop. Yes, sound effects are needed. All right, so let me put that down, put that down. Now I am asking this little die here to go through embossing powder that's now a solid that's now a plastic stacy tape paper so i may just want to run it through forward and back just to give it the opportunity the chance to make sure it cuts okay because i am asking it to do an awful lot chemically etched dies don't have a cutting blade on it like perhaps a steel rule die one of the thick dies they've got um They've got a cutting blade on it, like an actual blade, like you could cut yourself with it. Did I get it? Did I get it? Ha. Huh. And there we go. Ha! Huh. And it's almost, it's, it's, it's so different than using any kind of an ink. And you get such dimension. And, so, and looky, it's not sticky where the glue went. Yay! And if for some reason, let's say there's a little stick over here from the Stacy tape that I didn't quite get enough of my embossing powder. No worries. Just grab your microfine glitter or whatever makes your heart happy. Drizzle a little bit on there. You're just trying to get rid of a little bit of that sticky. So I'm just going to move that around with my finger. And poof, that sticky is now gone. So pretty. And then you can take it and let's find that paper again. Okay, not that one. Oh, I think it's this one. Let me close this up. burlap which is beautiful it is not self-adhesive but it's wonderful paper it's not paper it's actual burlap truly it is burlap it's got beautiful texture to it and I could put this on there and let's grab some Stacy tape found it let's grab some Stacy tape really quick and I'm going to put this on there. You would do a much better job putting Stacy tape down to hold it, but I just want to show you what it'll look like when it's all done. And let's mat that to there. Grab my scissors. Freehand. I know. I know. What is she doing? Some and I. I even if you sent me a mini trimmer, I'm not going to use a trimmer. I am who I am. I've got no more room on my YouTube table for anything. And then I can take it and put it here. And some Stacy tape down. And again, you would do a much better job of taping this than I am. I just want to show you. Gosh, and it fits almost beautifully. It fits perfectly. What if I wanted a bigger, if I want a bigger. And then freehand it. You're gonna freehand the burlap too. Yes. Look at how easy it cuts. Doris was downstairs doing it with a, a guillotine cutter. It just cut beautifully. Love the burlap. Don't know where you find burlap pages in 6x6 six six other than die cuts with a view. And they are so reasonably priced. 
Look! How yummy is that, right? Love the texture that that burlap adds. Love that, that extra element to your design. So you've got texture here, you've got texture here, you've got your layering, fabulous. But we're not done. And I am gonna be super quick with this last one. Okay, let's keep everything towards me. All right, I am going to take a piece of white paper and I am going to take some of my daubers. So we sell the daubers in the pack. Lots of places do, absolutely. Ours are, I think, probably the best price on the market. They're an everyday low price at $23.99. You don't have to wait for them to go on sale. But then the refills, I think the refills is where we really hit our, our stride. We sell 20 of these for $9.99. And not in the case, but I don't think there's anywhere, anywhere, anywhere you can find it for that price. I'm gonna grab some of my little finger daubers. I'm gonna go into some of my inks. And I'm just gonna get it on there. I am just going to get some of this ink right on there. And then maybe I use a little bit of the brown, the light brown. And blend that with a little bit. I don't care that they're not blending fabulously. I'm okay. You know what? I'm going to keep that green on. I'm even going to go higher with it. I just want to get some down on my paper. Okay. A little bit more brown. And then I'm going to use my yellow. yellow going and then I'm going to use a dark brown there's my dark brown dauber and I'm just using memento ink doesn't matter what ink you use you just want to get some down I know you're like oh what are you doing Trust me, wait. Talk about easy peasy. And I think I'll add just a little bit green to it up top as well, just to kind of finish it out. Okay, hot mess. Let's put some of the lids back on. Dobbers away. Okay, hot mess. I know. I'm gonna take one of my other dies. Oh, one of my other dies. This one comes with the center. And then I gave you extra pieces if you wanted to add to it. So here's my center. Am I close? Am I close? Am I close? Did I get it close enough? I'm gonna say that's close enough. I just needed to make sure I had enough ink to be the same size as the die or bigger. So I'm going to cut it out, bring over my Big Shot machine. Oh, this one's pretty intricate. It's got pretty fine lines, so I am going to use my precision base plate on it just to be safe. Line it up, put it down kind of at an angle, send it through. So I kind of hodgepodge colored it as opposed to cutting it out of my white paper first and coloring it second, which if you want to be very specific about where you're putting your things, you absolutely can do that. I'm gonna do 180 degree rotate because my paper's too wide for me to do a small, to do a 90 degree. If I tried to do a 90 degree, my paper would be too wide for my platform. And let's see what I've got. Okay. 
Looks like it cut all the way through. Pop it off. That's what I'm left with, which by George, you could make a beautiful, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother card right there. But let me pull out my piece. Okay. And just by smudging and smushing and smearing, I have got my beautiful, my beautiful die cut all colored and ready to go without too much thought. <laughs> That's my kind of crafting. Wahoo could chew. <laughs> now, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. I'm going to take my white paper. I'm going to take my Stacy tape. I'm going to rip it off. And again, if you don't have a size this big, don't worry about it. If you've got smaller sizes, just line them up to make the width that you need. I've got a mess going on over here. Let's make sure that I've got my, my oh, there it is. My one that comes out of the Easy Bake Oven. I've got one that's already done. You know when you're watching those cooking shows and they do the whole recipe and then they open the oven and they put one in and at the same time they take the one that's all nice and finished and beautiful out? Well, we're doing that today. <laughs> okay, so put it down. I don't need that much Stacy tape. I'm going to save this piece because that's too much to waste. Even for me. Expose my sticky, put down my pre-colored, beautiful die. So what if you don't want to use just cardstock? What if you want to color it yourself? Okay, there you go. And then wash, rinse, and repeat with what we've done earlier. I can drip my, put my blues in. I can even put some of my beiges and my browns in that come with the earth in the sky, maybe down here a little bit. Put some of these browns in and kind of build the color. And here. So I am painting my background with embossing powder. And I'm not being overly careful or I'm just kind of getting it down. So if I were to take and finish the whole thing, oh, this bottle's full. I could throw some green in there. Take it and kind of move it all around and blend them into each other. and then start to heat set so that poof, magically, what I get is that all nice and finished. But this time I colored my die cut. I didn't just use a, a, a cardstock. I took a white piece and added my color to it and then die cut out because maybe you want to be a little more creative. Maybe you're trying to make a certain color. Maybe you need it to fit a certain layout or a uh, card or altered art or mixed media. Maybe you just like to dauber on and be haphazard about it and see what you get because it's amazing what happens when you just let it go. And then I could heat this, change it from a powder to a solid, and have something just beautiful. Now, the only difference between this one and this one, hopefully you're still with me, this one's on white paper, this one's on black. Hello! 
What ugly paper do you still have? It could have been green paper underneath. It could have been blue paper underneath. It could have been whatever, because that embossing powder, once you heat it, is going to go opaque and it's going to hide the color of the paper underneath. You have yucky old double-sided paper from a kit from years gone by, and it's the one page that you didn't want to use, but you couldn't bring yourself to throw it away. Hello. All right. We have done a lot, a lot, a lot. We die cut and we colored and we die cut and we, we just threw down our embossing powder and made beautiful images. We painted with our embossing powder and we were more specific where we have the sky going down. And then we colored our die cut and then used embossing powder. You can do all of this. And the only thing I used for glue, well, was to glue down my, <laughs> my die cut, which I could have cut my, my, the decor die for the boat out of, put Stacy tape on the back of the black and then cut it and it would have been a sticker to go right down. Okay, I have got oodles and oodles and oodles of samples to show you. If you are no longer with me, you've missed the very, very best part because these are the SMS Girls samples and they make beautiful things. I am going to start with Elena's because I want it, just this one, because I want you to see it before I accidentally, oh no, I have the whole storyboards to show. Wait, stop, hold up. You move this out of the way. Let me move this out of the way. Let me show the storyboards real quick. Okay, first storyboard. We have got all of the sentiments. So the stamp set. $9.99 gets you all the sentiments. And then here is the here is the matching foil of the cattails that I did. Okay. And that's using a GoPress and foil machine. So you can see I gave you a few extras so that you could build on it if you wanted. So you've got the sentiment, stamp sentiments, and the foil plate for your GoPress and foil, your glimmer machine, or your crafter's companion Gemini foil. So there's one. Then you have the stamp and die set. So here's the matching stamp. Here's the die. I used this as the die that I used. percent sure what went there but Elena you'll have to tell me I think something went there <gasps> is this no I don't know I'm at a loss all right well we'll find it eventually so we've got the stamp and we've got the die all right then we go with the sailboat and I've got the sailboat in a hot foil plate so you can foil your sailboats and you get two and you get the words sail away, let your dreams set sail. Those are foil plates. And then here's the die, the sailboat die. And yes, you get the words go as far as you can. When you get there, you'll be able to see further. All of this comes in the set. Foil plate. die set. Then we have the stamp set for the sailboat. And then we have our first dive, die, which is the, the wave, one of the I want it all collection, my wave crashing over. Then we have I'm wondering if these are stuck together. Nope, she put them together, so I'm going to let them be. I am so confused, Elena. <laughs> okay, we have the pier and there's a little ducky in there. So the water with the pier, 
and the little ducky. Oh, that's what she's showing. It's the square part. It's the rectangle. Hello, Stacy. Ha! And my droplet of water. That's what she's showing you, the rectangle. That took me a moment. Sorry, Elena. And then we have the actual pier with the lamplight and the words you get with that. It is always the simple that produces the marvelous. Those are what the words say that come with this die. And then we have our cliff. So you can paint the background easy peasy with your embossing powders. And then last but not least, we have my little dude standing out in the water, overlooking the water. My little boy in the water. You even get the water. And the die says, smell the sea, fill the sky, let your soul and spirit fly. So this is my little dude. All right, now let's do the samples. Okay, so Elena's first sample, and then I'll get to her other ones. She took the pier and the boat and put it in. Oh, right, is that awesome? And then as it goes down, the pier and the boat and the, and the sail away and um, the sea in the back, I have no idea how she did this. And then on the back it says, don't wait, the time will never be just right. She used the stamp to stamp the back of it. Oh my gosh, Elena, how clever are you? I know, right? Okay, let's move on. Um, let's start with Doris. So here we've got Doris and the Crashing Wave. Great for guy cards. No beauty shines brighter than that of a good heart. That's Doris. Here is Doris. Go as far as you can. And she's used the embossing powder. Go as far as you can. Doris. God has a purpose for your pain. Oh, this one says open me. God has a purpose for your pain. A reason for your struggle. And a reward for your faithfulness. Don't ever give up. This is Doris. And here she's done a hot foil. And I'm supposed to open it. Happiness is the place between too little and too much. There you go. So that is Doris. Next we'll do Belinda. Belinda's got, <laughs> he's so cute. She's got the little dude in a jar where you could then collect your seashells and your sand. Wouldn't this be cute to do for, um, for a child that when you go to the beach to collect your precious trinkets and they save them in here? This is Belinda. And then Belinda has got a sailboat in a jar. Someday you'll look back and know exactly why it had to happen. And then Belinda's got a gorgeous girl on my, my um, drop in the water. And she used the negative that came out to add a little more fullness down here. And then Belinda did a beautiful mixed media piece. It's beautiful, Belinda, truly, it's beautiful. You've got the boy, you've got the, the sailboats, you've got the pier, I mean, she incorporated the birds, she did everything in here, and it is beautiful, Belinda. What a great job, amazing. It's all texture pasted. She cut a little, a little boat for him to be holding. Belinda, this is wonderful. It really is just wonderful. And then we have Michelle. And Michelle did a hot foil. 
It says, open me. All right, I'll open you. Michelle did a hot foil. Let your dreams set sail, also done in the hot foil. This is Michelle, love it. And then this is Michelle, these are beautiful. I saw these earlier today. I usually don't look, but I saw these earlier today. Again, in a foil, she foiled right on top of the paper and it is beautiful, Michelle. Beautiful. And then this one also. Don't ever wait. The time will never be just right. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. Such a good job. Okay, and then SMS girl Sharon, while retired from SMS for now, has made her samples. So we've got our little dude all in glimmer shimmer. So cute, Sharon. And then I've got an open me. This one's beautiful. This one's beautiful. Go as far as you can. When you get there, you'll be able to see further. Beautiful, Sharon. Oh my goodness gracious, she did such a lovely job. Look at how gorgeous is that. It doesn't say open me, right? Okay, good. And you get so many colors off of that shimmer, glimmer paper. Beautiful. Don't wait, the time will never be just right. And then it's always the simple that produces the marvelous. So again, done with Mr. SMS in my heart when I, when I put these together. Um, let's see, this is Claire. Claire used the negative piece from that water. And she used the small boat and the sun and the cliffs. So this is Claire, who is at home not feeling so well right now. So we are sending her all of our well wishes. This is Claire. Right? Isn't that fabulous? I happen to love this dye. I don't know if any of you are going to love it, but I love it. So <laughs> I just, I think I just love this dye. I just love the ripples in the water. I just think it stands for so much in, in, in my life. And look at this. Is that gorgeous? And this is using the stamp set. She stamped this and then inked it. It's a beautiful. And here she used the die cut. And then she has an absolutely gorgeous mixed media piece. Right? On a piece of wood. And she just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. She and Belinda do the most amazing, well, she, Belinda, and Elena, oh my goodness gracious, they think so out of the box. What do all the girls do? They all are simply amazing. They take what I think up and then they make it magic. And last but not least is Elena. I'm supposed to, so, <laughs> bare feet welcome. There's my little dude, isn't he so cute? <laughs> I love him. And here is my little birdie in the water with the pier coming down. The and my little, my little birdie just in the water and I love my water and I'm supposed to open it. Okay. Oh, happiness is the place between too little and too much. Love this die too. And then she foiled on top of glitter, right? using the, the foil plates with her GoPress and foil machine. And then she did my droplets of water. And I'm supposed to open it. They've gotten to be not so subtle about opening. Someday you will look back and know exactly why it had to happen. I think that is true for all of us. 
I think there's something in our life that we weren't and we don't understand, but someday we'll be able to look back and see. And look at how cute is this? Oh, Elena, this is just darling. Here she foiled and cut out the reeds. I just, the cattails, I just love them. I'm supposed to open it. Happiness often sneaks in a door you did not think was open. Okay, and the last one I'm gonna show you is mine. So I did this card while I was playing and it's got the burlap on one side and it's got the beautiful paper from die cuts with a view and I used my embossing powder and heat it and made this beautiful texture. This is my card. All right. And the, so we have got all the dies on sale. I have got the three different packs of the paper that I used on sale, which again, you don't duplicate any colors and the burlap is just fabulous. It just lends something when you need it to just, you need a little bit of something more, but you're not sure what. And especially if you're doing masculine cards, this is definitely the way to go. Love them. And then we also have the exclusive earth and sky on sale. Oh my gosh, this YouTube was long. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna tilt on up and I'm gonna say I am so sorry for how long. I know you say don't apologize, but I still do. I do, I feel, oh my gosh, that's a lot of Stacy. Hello, hello, okay, that's not so much Stacy anymore. All right, you guys, where are you gonna get all of this great product? You're gonna get it at scrapbookingmadesimple.com because the dies and the stamps and the hot foil plates, well, those are exclusive to us. You can't get them anywhere else. The embossing powder is exclusive to us. You can't get them anywhere else. The paper you might be able to get other places, maybe joannes.com, but I'm not so sure. I don't know if they have these packs. So if you like it, if you love it, come shop with us. Visit us in the retail store. They're downstairs doing the make and take, and I am in Germany. I will see you on Facebook for Live From Creative World. And until then, until next week, have a super one, you guys. Thank you so much for, for staying with me, and I hope you learned something. Next class, oh, Hampton Arts. We're using Hampton Arts. So next class, oh, and an exclusive, a new product from Scrapbooking Made Simple, a new product from Simply Defined. No, Refined. Simply Refined. A new product from Simply Refined. I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Bye.